two dividend stocks to consider in March of 2024. This is a series that I do every month, talking about two dividend stocks. I have two interesting ones for the video. Both of them are yielding a pretty decent dividend yield. Both of them are still growing EPS per share, which is important if you want a company that's going to grow the dividends in the future up to 8% EPS growth, which is very good for dividend companies. Both of them will likely have pretty good upside potential because they are trading well below their five-year mean price to AFFO per share. Both of them will likely hold up or even go up if we do have a pullback on the S&P 500 as we tend to have a rotation from high-value tech stocks or maybe AI stocks more into safety stocks, dividend payers, pharmaceutical stocks, REITs, a lot of the consumer staples and many other ones. So I think you're really going to enjoy this uh, video. Now before I get started, I'm just going to give you a very quick update because I talked about a lot of dividend stocks on the channel. I talked about Mid-America, Bristol Myers, which they are starting to play out. They're up 8% on the month, which is nothing because these companies still have so much upside potential. Even realty income is still yielding 6%. Pfizer is still yielding 6%. A lot of the dividend stocks are still beating down as the S&P is making new highs. And I know it's frustrated for a lot of dividend investors. And a lot of you are just wondering, when are these stocks going to move? When is the move going to happen? I know some of you maybe believe that we're not going to cut rates in 2024 because of higher inflation in the first two months. I personally don't have this view. I still believe we're going to have the three rate cuts in 2024, maybe even more, maybe five rate cuts in 2024. I'm pretty optimistic around this scenario. And I'm starting to see the language change from a lot of Fed members, even from Bullard, which was one of the most hawkish members in 2022 and in 2021. And this is what he said. He said the February job report increases chances of Fed cutting interest rates sooner. As you know, unemployment ticked up a little bit. It barely ticked up. And they're already talking about having interest rate cuts way sooner. You have from another Fed members. He said, I am not very concerned that rate cuts will fuel inflation. Now, of course, this is not true. Rate cuts will fuel inflation, but this is not an instant thing. It's not like, oh, interest rates come down and then inflation goes up at the same time. Maybe it takes a year or two, maybe it takes three or four years. These things take time. But between now and then, a lot of things can happen with stocks, with REITs, with the S&P 500. And this is where I see a massive opportunity to really make some serious money. If I was like, 80 or 90 percent cash and i'm waiting for a market crash i would be going all in dividend stocks i'm just being honest because these things are still very undervalued and they're very undervalued even on the charts i mean they're cl pretty close to bottoming out a lot of them i'm going to talk about it here in the video but he's not concerned about you know f rate cuts fueling inflation even from powell himself he said we are not looking for inflation to go all the way down to two percent this was not his language last year he was waiting for two percent and that's it and they will not raise the uh, inflation target. Well, from this language here, what I'm hearing him say, we're not looking for inflation to go all the way down to 2%, but we need more evidence. I mean, some, somewhere close to 2%, maybe 3%, 2.9%. It's fine for him to start cutting rates. So from their language, I'm saying that rate cuts are much sooner than you believe. Even Biden himself said it. He believes the Fed's going to cut rates very, very soon. He most likely have some influence on that. That's what I believe. Even maybe after 2024, after the election, we could potentially have a new president that's a huge fan of much lower interest rates. He even said he wants to fire Powell and all these things. I don't think he could do that. I'm, I'm not sure you could check. But as you just have way, a lot of things that are going to bring rates lower. And this is going to bring rates much, much higher as the 10 year starts to come down and you're going to have less competition with rates, with uh, you know dividend stocks and many other things. It looks like it has stopped out and it's starting to come down. So as a final conclusion, I believe interest rate cuts are coming in way sooner than most people accept. I think they're still coming. I think we could have more than three cuts in 2024. I could be wrong, but I think if that does happen, these rates are going to make massive, massive moves very, very quickly. And the first one I want to talk about in the video is a REIT called Vichy Properties sitting at $29 per share. It's still sitting at the same price it was in 2021. Now compare that to the S&P 500 or to Inveria. You could see some, I mean, dividend investors have been struggling, but a lot of them are long-term investors and they just keep buying these stocks, dollar cost averaging down. I have a few dividend stocks, but I'm not like crazy into it. It's sitting at $29 per share. Most of you are familiar with the company. They own a lot of popular bands. I mean, they pretty much own the Las Vegas Strip. Everything in the blue here in this map 
is theirs like the mirage is for them the caesar palace they own it the venetians they own it in new york park mgm luxor they own it mandalay bay they own it everything in the blue is owned by vichy and they have so many of them not just in vegas but all across the united states within local casinos and many other things now this reed is one of the fa safest streets you'll ever find because they have very you know long term leases this is the weighted average lease term for caesars it's 31 years mgm is 51 years the venetian 48 years seminole hard rock 54 years pen entertainment 30 years 54 years the 13 tennis the weighted average is 41 years so you, you don't really have to worry about is you know, the caesar's palace going vacant and a lot of them are backed by you know pretty massive corporations with a lot of profits and amazing balance sheets so this is pretty amazing for vc properties i think it was an amazing buy in march 2020 i mean it's, it, it was amazing it was really like 10 percent 11 percent but they do have very long term leases most of them are inflation indexed the company has been raising the dividend much quicker than other rates around 7.6 percent you have real the income raising it at only three percent triple net only at two and a half but you have vc properties at 7.6 percent annual which is pretty good for dividend investor so balance sheet is not too bad at all they don't have any crazy maturities 99 percent of them are fixed which i like as you know with mid america it's the same thing with vc 99 percent are fixed and no crazy maturities is going to get them in trouble before 2032 and and again it's a good balance sheet in general i really like the company now, in terms of the dividend, the dividend, the next 12 months dividend, you know, incorporating the 7.5% increase in 2024, is around 5.8%. So this is the yield you will most likely get. It's around 5.8%, which is not bad. It's sitting pretty close to the peak, which was around 6%. I think 6% was amazing on Vichy. Now it's 5.8%, which is really not bad at all. Now, one thing I really kind of hate with VC is it's very hard to predict the AFFO per share growth. Because it goes from 3% to 10% to 11% to 6% to 4% in 2024 to 3.5% in 2025. And they expect 2026 around 3.7%. So why can't VC grow again 10 11%? It's very hard to predict and it's very hard for the company to scale. There's only so many huge casinos they can operate and they can acquire. They are trying to do a lot of different things around sports, I believe, and entertainment centers within the college basketball, a lot of other things, which I believe is smart. And these things are pretty resilient and, and they're pretty good. But again, it's, it's harder for the company to scale. And this is why the, EP, the FFO per share is very hard to predict. But I think around 4 to 3% is fair. And this would lead me to the last point, which is before I tell you the total return, which I can tell you the total return right now. I mean, I see around pretty close to a 6% dividend. I see around a 4% AFFO per share growth annual. It could grow 10%. It could surprise everyone again. But I would count on 4%. So this is around 10% annual. But the only thing with VC properties is the company is very, very safe, which is amazing. But because it's safe, you're going to have to give up some upside. And if you look at the so forward AFFO price wave FFO per share, which is kind of like a PE ratio for REITs, is sitting at 13 times AFFO. Now, the mean is 14 and a half. Normally, whenever I'm looking at these stocks, I like to look at the multiple and I look at the mean multiple. I'm like, all right, if interest rates come down to two, two and a half percent, we could most likely go to the mean multiple and get a massive multiple expansion. You could see that with realty income, with, with America, the multiple expansion is huge. The difference is huge between the last price to FFO to the mean multiple over the last five or 10 years. This is not the case with Vichy. It's between 13 times to 14 and a half times. So you're not getting a massive multiple multiple expansion and with a 6% dividend and 4% AFFO per share growth and a slight multiple expansion, I do not see a return more than 11, 12, maybe maximum 13% annual, which is not the highest return ever. But this is why Vichy is much safer than real -time income. It's much safer than triple net. It's much safer than a lot of the apartment rates because they have such long-term leases. But if you're more of a risk taker, I think real -time income or a 
CDC or Mid America are much better buying opportunities than BC. But I did select BC for the value because I haven't talked about it often. And I think this is a safe investment that could provide a decent return over the short term and even over the long term. The second stock I'm going to talk about here in the video is Pepsi stock. And I think Pepsi is a much better buying opportunity than something like Vichy properties. Now, I have to say, normally, whenever I look into these stocks, I don't try to hold them for the long term. I try to buy them on bad sentiment. Something's going to happen, maybe lower interest rates. Then I buy them, lower interest rates come, the sentiment changes, people are forming into something like REITs and something like Pepsi. The stock goes up 20, 30, 40% within a few weeks. When the rotation happens, I sell out and I take my profits within a few months, 20, 30, 40%, and I move on to something else. And this is what I do with dividend stocks because I am not a long term dividend investor. But I think Pepsi is an amazing stock for long term dividend investor. As you know, they own many different things other than Pepsi. Pepsi, a lot of snacks, a lot of chips, and many others. And this is the difference between Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is much more focused on beverages, but Pepsi, over 59%, is in convenient food, a lot of snacks, and, and many other things. And the best part about it is a lot of these brands are still growing organically very, very well for the size of Pepsi. Like Pepsi is still growing 10%, Gatorade is going around 12%, Doritos is growing 16%, you know, Mountain Dew is growing 8%, Lay's is growing 13%, but I have to say most of the organic growth that you see is mainly price increases because Pepsi, just like Coca-Cola, just like Nestle, they've been suffering from volume. Volume has been coming down and they've been offsetting it by massive price hikes. And this is the best thing about these companies. They can have the pricing power and they can hike prices however they want and whenever they want. And people will still buy Pepsi. They will still buy water products. They will still buy, you know, the latest chips and all these things. So massive pricing power for these companies. Over 52 years of dividend increases, 7.5%. 7%, and they increase the dividend way quicker than Coca-Cola. I think Coca-Cola is around 3 to 4%, and Pepsi is 7.7%, which is good for long-term investors. In terms of the upside for the company, they have, in terms of a long-term target, high single-digit EPS growth, and high single-digit is around 8 to 9%. And this is what the analysts have as well, around 8%, 7%, 9%, so around 8% on average. So we're having the 8% EPS growth that we're likely going to get, and it's sustainable because Pepsi can keep increasing these prices. So I think the 8% is sustainable, but we also have the 3% dividend yield, which is higher than the mean average. The mean was 2.7%. Now it's 3.3%, which is normal because we have much higher interest rates than we had over the last 10 years. So we have the 3% dividend, we have the 8% or even 9%, or let's say 8% EPS per share. This is around 11% annual. And we have a slight multiple expansion. Now Pepsi is trading at 19.99, around 20 times price to earnings ratio. Now the high was around 27 and the low was around 16.7. So the low of 16.7 and now sitting at 20 times, it's much closer to the low than it was at the high. And this has marked historically some kind of a bottom on Pepsi. I mean, it could go lower. It could go to 18 times or 17 and a half times. But I think the stock is pretty close to bottoming out, not just on the charts, but also in some fundamentals. So I think it's an amazing buying opportunity at this price. I like Pepsi and I like Vichy properties. I also like, you know, Bristol Myers. You guys know that and Mid-America and Pfizer and all these things. And I think dividend stocks and REITs are much closer to bottoming out and making a move. They've been, it's over two years. I think it's much closer than most of you believe. And interest rates cuts are coming soon. This is my thesis and this is my thoughts in the video. It was not financial advice. So thank you so much for watching it. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.